Welcome to worship here at Lakeside Community Lutheran Church. We'd like to extend a special welcome here today to a number of barbershop harmony singers who are singing in a choir here this morning. A number of you may have heard them last evening, and I'm referencing the uh, announcement here. Howling at the Moon, a night of barbershop harmony, the Northern Pines Harmony Brigade, and just one more at the Voyager Village, Kilcarra Large. And so <clears throat> Dave invited a number of his close personal friends here, and so they'll be singing part of the uh, call to worship, the choir anthem, and will featuring us then at the end with an Irish blessing. And so we appreciate them and following our service for today, uh, introduce yourselves to them and, and uh, thank them for their ministry of music. This morning then is uh, the theme of the sermon then is uh, blessed be the Lord. It's based upon Psalm 103, blessed be the Lord and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Flowers today are given by Joe Connor in memory of his wife, Mabel. And uh, next week then will be, the theme will be bless the years honoring older adults then. Give thanks to God then for the gift of wisdom and experience that comes with the years. And then on Labor Day weekend will be called faith and daily life on Labor Day weekend. And in September then we begin with our 10 o'clock worship. At this time then it looks like we've got a couple of announcements. This is the last Sunday, <clears throat> excuse me, I was singing with the guys too last night. Um, this is the last Sunday to talk about our uh, site profile for uh, our church here. I was rereading this a few times over and I thought, boy, what a rich history we've had at this church. Starting out in 86 down at the uh, lake, Fish Lake, uh, back in 01, building the addition on to the church here where where men actually walked around on the roof carrying four by eight sheets of plywood. Uh, back in 07, there was a group of us along with our brothers and sisters from Sacred Heart that went down to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi for the Katrina disaster. We were down there for a week. So the community gets bigger and bigger. Um, of course, the Ludafisk dinners and the trash and treasures. I also noticed that uh, there's a golden hammer award running around this church somewhere from the A-team. And that symbolized the uh, work that we did on habitat houses. We built houses in uh, Grantsburg, we built houses in Webster, we built houses in Siren. Uh, also, Ken Busby reminded me <clears throat> the other day, uh, the woodchucks. Where do we come up with all these goofy names? I don't know. Um, Habitat or heat a home project for uh, uh, last year we sawed, cut, and split, and stacked and delivered 270 trailer loads of wood to people that uh, can ill afford the cost of, of propane. So that's where we've been. Then the question becomes where are we going? And that's what we've addressed in this, this profile as well. So uh, feel free to pick up a copy of the profile out in the uh, table in the narthex. You have till next Sunday to uh, make your comments. We are going to be going to, uh, Ken and I are going to be going to council on Tuesday and getting a uh, pre-approval of this profile. And without any further uh, comments or from the congregation, we will be then pushing the magic button and submitting this on to, uh, to Senate. And then it'll be in God's hands. So, thank you. Call your attention to the bulletin for a couple of announcements regarding the uh, call process. On the very back here, it talks about
congregational vacancies in the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin. So this congregation would be one of the congregations as a part of the uh, call process then or the in-between installed pastor period of time. You'll have an opportunity to uh, look there and see some of those congregations. Some have been in longer and some of more recent such as ours. And then on an inside page, uh, it's numbered number nine here, kind of an inside back cover. It talks about the call process in Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. So I offer those as a couple of announcements here today to provide some background then of the uh, call process. Uh, as was mentioned here, then Tuesday is our um, uh, Congressional Council. In addition to the profile, then look at the budget process. And as I uh, talked in the concurrent interview with the uh, Congressional Council, we'll be going through the uh, transition dynamics one at a time. And so this, uh, this coming uh, month, we'll uh, offer up heritage. As we heard uh, a little bit of background here from our presentation in the call process, too, looking back, uh, where have we been then, and building upon the strengths that God has given to us. Well, welcome again to our service here today, and a special welcome then to our added voices here. I know that this congregation loves to sing and loves and appreciates good music as well. So at this time, we continue then with our prelude and then our call to worship.
get our service with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, now and for now, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the goodness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together. Christ, by grace you kept and saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith, Amen. Our gathering song, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie.
great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning. Thank you, choir. I almost forgot to come up here because I was still <laughs> listening. <laughs> nice. The first reading today is from Isaiah 58, 9b through <coughs> verse 14. God promises those who have returned from exile that where justice and mercy prevail, the ruins will be rebuilt and light will rise in the darkness. It is a day for new beginnings. The reading. If you, remember, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The psalm today is Psalm 
103, verses 1 through 8, and we'll read it responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. Using images of Moses, the writer presents a striking vision of the new covenant of God made possible in Christ. There is no longer fear, only awe in the new promise in Christ into which we are invited. The reading from Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, the voice shook the earth, But now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, Our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus heals a woman on the Sabbath, offering her a new beginning for her life. When challenged by a narrow reading of the Sabbath command, Jesus responds by expanding Sabbath work to include setting people free from bondage. The reading. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand upright. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, 
Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the manger, lead it away to give it water? And not not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear people of God, grace be unto you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. This is the friendly command in our psalm for today. As a psalmist in this hymn of praise, in the psalm book, which would have been the worship book for the Israelite Hebrew people, it comes down to us here today. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and with all thy might, bless God's holy name. Speak well of God and speak of God's name in all the earth. The psalmist then goes on to say, forget not all of his benefits. And so God really doesn't need reason to be worshipped. Actually, worship means worthy of worship. But the psalmist goes like it anyway and gives the benefits. Goes on to say, who forgives all our iniquity and heals us from all our diseases. Martin Luther puts it this way, where there is forgiveness of sin, there is life and salvation. And so to you is given the gift of forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. And because of that, you can bless the Lord with all my might. Now when the psalmist speaks of bless the Lord, O my soul, he speaks of it in such a way that it involves one's whole being. In fact, the Hebrew word also speaks of almost like kneeling or even prostrating before God. Bless the Lord with all my soul. Another benefit is, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Around you is surrounded then the gifts of steadfast love and mercy. And because of that, you can bless the Lord with all your soul. Who satisfies you with good as long as you live. Next week we're going to uh, focus on bless the years honoring older adults and we give thanks to God for the gift of years, and we thank God for the gift of satisfies you with the good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And uh, such a majestic sight, is it not? And uh, any time a person sees an eagle, it almost gives a person a stop in their life, kind of breathe a little bit quicker as the majestic of the eagle. It's our national symbol as well. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are impressed. So God seeks out those who are impressed. And he speaks of our heritage here. He has made known his ways to Moses and his acts of the people of Israel. And then concludes our part here. The Lord is merciful and graceful, slow to anchor, and abounding in steadfast love. And so today, hear these words of the psalmist, a hymn of praise for you and for me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, with all your being, and forget not all of his benefits. Well, in our uh, personal devotional that uh, some of you may find helpful, and um, here we go. For this uh, past week, it talks about a pep talk for the soul and based upon Psalm 103, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Marvelous aspects of the human experience flow from what we call the mind and the soul. And though we can't point to these things like we can to body parts, we know they're essential to who we are and how we live. We think. We have complex emotions. We have spiritual experiences of jubilation, peace, and despair. We pray to God. We talk to ourselves. Long before modern psychology weighed in, the psalmist knew the power of a good pep talk. That's the title of this one, a pep talk for the soul. Remember, soul, who God is and all that God has done and will do for you. Bless the Lord, soul, with everything you've got. Receive all of God's good benefits, forgiveness, healing, new life, love, and mercy. And then concludes with this paragraph, And when fear and anxiety overwhelms us, the Lord is merciful and gracious. These blessings will help us remember God's steadfast love and good gifts and will lead our souls to bless the Lord. We can be renewed with youthful energy and hope. In renewing God who created you and nourish your body, mind, and soul, keep us in your grace. 
um, in. <clears throat> it was interesting to see who the author was for this particular stretch here, and it's uh, Dale Chisley, retired ELCA pastor who lives with his wife Catherine in Ashland, Wisconsin. And it says, biking the lakefront, hiking the north woods, and volunteering keep him busy. He has two adult daughters, a son-in-law, and one daughter of the heart, and worships at Saran Lutheran Church in Ashland. Well, the, uh, the, um, psalmist, the psalm that we have here today has been the basis of much, uh, many musical renditions. And uh, from with our one voice, it's called, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Now, uh, the last uh, assignment I served, I served two churches. One was a, a con uh, country church, a small country church, and I think we were setting four of the uh, ELW. But the other one uh, kind of had a blended worship, and so they would project songs on the screen here. And one of their favorites then was called 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman, and it was based upon this psalm as well. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. So many of you remarked as you came in today what a beautiful morning it is, and it certainly is. And so this song, 10,000 Reasons, then, gives us reason to praise the Lord the whole day long. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great, your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise on ending 10,000 years and then forevermore. We're glad for the gift of praise that comes down to us from the psalmist very beginning here, and we're glad the many and various ways in which that music is given to us. We heard from our barbershoppers in the choir here this morning and look forward to their Irish blessing at the end of our service here for today. We know that uh, there are many uh, varieties and styles of musical worship. Uh, one of our people coming in here recounted that when uh, they go to Texas in the wintertime, they sometimes go to a Mexican cathedral here and hear Mariucci music. And so there's all different ways to praise God, isn't it? And uh, when we get to heaven, uh, we can sing with the Carter family, Oh, when the, circle, when the circle be unbroken, the circle shall never be unbroken. And that will be a way, too, that we'll all be able to sing this music that God has given to us. Well, Martin Luther, in the first commandment uh, of the small catechism, it's provided the uh, back of our worship book here, says, you shall have no other gods, and we are to fear, love, and trust God above anything else. And in the second commandment, he talks about protecting God's name. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. We should fear, and love, trust God, so that we do not uh, curse, swear, lie, or deceive, but call upon God in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And then God sets aside a commandment, the Sabbath day, keep the Sabbath day holy. We are to fear, and love, and trust God, so that we do not neglect God's word in the preaching of it, but gladly receive it and regard it as holy. And so God gives to us the gift of worship then and invites us to these services of worship here. I am glad that you have come to this service of worship here today. And I thank you for your faithful attendance through your many years and decades actually of gathering to God to praise God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Uh, the Westminster Catechism then, our Presbyterian brothers and sisters ask the question, what is the chief end of humanity? And simply says to worship God and enjoy God forever. And so it is today that we gather here as people of God. Now you heard a little bit earlier then about our uh, call committee working in, on the what we call the ministry site profile that will be presented to our Congregational Council on this coming Tuesday. And there are a couple of places in which uh, worship is mentioned then and articulated in our uh, profile here. One is uh, energy. What is your congregation or organization really excited about? And says, uh, as worship is a high priority at Lakeside, we need to actively pursue becoming a larger presence in the community. And then uh, one of the um, 
mission here, it says, worshiping as a mostly traditional congregation, preaching from the Bible impacts and inspires us. The successful candidate should enjoy preaching biblical sermons and applying the biblical teachings to our daily life activities, relationships, and ministering to others in our community. And then under programs, it talks about worship and music, oversees the music department altar guild, coordinating the planning of church services. I enjoyed meeting with our music and worship committee this past Tuesday, and at that time then Dave brought up that uh, the barbershoppers would be coming here today, and so we anticipated their presence and thank God for them here today. Uh, last Sunday before the service, uh, somebody said, well, well, Pastor, what, what is about this congregation that you found insightful or maybe a little bit different or unique, and so I had this past week to think about it, and I've come to appreciate then the, the love of singing here in this uh, particular gathered assembly. And people love to sing uh, the service. I appreciate as well a choir that comes to practice once a week and that offers each week a call to worship and a choir anthem as well. And uh, as one who's been around a while and various congregations, uh, 55 of them actually, it's uh, becoming increasingly rare then that we have that you have a choir that actually practices once a week and offers a call to worship and a choir anthem each and every week as well. Well, in the uh, bulletin here for today, I put in, some, put in another uh, piece by our uh, Evangelical Lutheran, Word, Lutheran Church in America on page number, uh, page number 10 then, and it says, uh, Worship, a foundation of faith for everything we do. And for Lutherans, worship stands at the center of our life of faith. And through God's word, water, bread, and prayer, we are nurtured in faith and sent out into the world. Connected with and central to everything we do, worship unites us in celebration, engages us in thoughtful dialogue, and helps us grow in faith. It grounds us in our Christian and Lutheran roots while demonstrating practical relevance for today's world. And then it goes on to talk about the, um, the rhythm of worship we start out with gathering, then move into word, and on Sundays of the services of the meal, then the next part is the meal, and then the sending. So it's gathering and sending, and in between the word and the meal. On those Sundays when it's service of the word, it's word and then thanksgiving. And so we engage in that daily or weekly ritual then that sends us out into our life as well. Well, through the years then, uh, the... Uh, the uh, Lutheran Church then has been uh, provided with various uh, worship materials. I remember uh, when I was growing up, there was the service book and hymnal. And uh, there were a lot of hymns in here uh, by J.S. Bach and all those four-part harmonies there. And uh, when I went to Concordia College, uh, they really appreciated that and were actually a little bit disappointed that when the next worship book came out, that it didn't have as many renditions by J.S. Bach. Well, when I uh, came into the parish then, it was the Lutheran Book of Worship, and the Lutheran Book of Worship came out in 1978. It was intended then to help the various church bodies uh, join together in what would become the ELCA in 1987. And uh, so the, uh, the thought here then is people could go to worship in various churches, and basically they'd be able to sing the same or similar liturgy in each and every church. And um, I remember having to uh, learn the liturgy when I first got in my first parish. In peace let us pray to the Lord. And so that was one of the things I had to learn when I became a new pastor. Well, um, then a supplement came out with one voice and that uh, intended to add a few uh, songs then which probably weren't in the uh, Green Book itself and you have those in your pew there as well. And then in 2006 we came out with the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Worship, otherwise known as the Cranberry Book, uh, distinguished then from the service book and hymnal, which is called the Red Book then. And the idea there then was to provide a great deal of variety then for various uh, worshiping styles in a gathered congregation. Well, uh, one of the presenters I used to go listen to is a man by the name of John Ilvesacker. He's since died now, but uh, he graduated from Concordia College, actually the college I graduated from trained classically, and when he got out teaching, uh, he realized uh, something about an organ and a piano, and he finally realized that uh, in playing a guitar, there's less wood between the musician and the people. So he's kind of the one who brought in the guitar-driven services in the Lutheran Church many decades ago. 
and he's probably best known for the uh, song, A Borning Cry. He was familiar, uh, known also for taking familiar tunes and then putting them to music, and he said it's the most requested song at funerals that he knows of, A Borning Cry, and it uh, kind of uh, goes through the stages of life. And then in addition to that, he, he stated a little known uh, tidbit that uh, kind of a hook as well. And he said it's based on an old swing tune from the 40s called, I Don't Get Around Much Anymore. <laughs> well, uh, many of his songs, you, you, you sing it or hear it, and you think, well, boy, I've heard that somewhere. And he made use of familiar tunes. Well, I went to two of his workshops, and one of them was to Czech, and another one, I can't remember where it was. But in both of them, he said the same thing. And he said, in 1900, if you wanted to have variety in worship in Story City, Iowa, which happens to be my hometown in central Iowa, about the size of Spooner. If you wanted low church or Hoagie Honor Church, you went to Bethel. If you wanted high church, the Synod Church, you went to St. Petri. If you wanted something in between, you went to Emmanuel, which was my church. And uh, he says, but today then, congregations are uh, resourced then with the ability to provide a variety in worship within their own gathered assembly. And here at our congregation, for instance, on Wednesdays then, we uh, provide a more informal service, oftentimes accompanied by flutes. And uh, then on Sundays, that's a little bit more formal service and accompanied by a keyboard, either organ or piano. And so we give thanks to God for the ways in which we can give thanks to God in many different ways. Lutherans are often known as a singing church. Uh, Martin Luther then was uh, quite the singer. He composed a number of different songs. And for that, we are very grateful. I'll tell you a little bit about myself growing up. My, my mother was convinced I was a monotone, and she told me so. Lowell, you are a monotone. <laughs> and so I believed that, and then as I grew up then, uh, and as I mentioned just a little bit later, I had to learn how to chant the liturgy, like it or not, and then I got into vacation Bible school, and they said, well, pastor, can you lead the music? And so I did with those old vinyl records, and when you know, we updated in technology and got cassette tapes after a while. And, uh, but I had a brother who, who was blessed a little bit more with that. In fact, when he was in fifth grade, uh, the teacher would play all the notes on the piano, both white and black, and he correctly identified them. And uh, then uh, my other brother took him up to the Boundary Waters one time. He couldn't sleep all night. He said the birds were singing out of tune. <laughs> and he came to my house one time, and he said, you know, your wind chains are just driving me nuts. They're out of tune. He was even convinced that the the tuning fork was a half step up. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse to have that kind of sensitivity. And uh, he was sitting next to me in church one time, and afterwards he said to me, Lowell, think sharp. <laughs> I tended to drop my notes, and he just said, go up like this. Well, whether we uh, uh, can sing on tune or off tune, the church then is one of the last places left for assembly type singing. I try to sing the national anthem at uh, sporting events, maybe some of you do too, but it inevitably gets pitched too high for me. So when we come here then, we can sing to our heart's content. Well, interestingly enough, in the um, most recent Lutheran, it, a living Lutheran, it talks about uh, songs of mistakes and grace, and uh, in this title, if they spelled it correctly, uh, it is different from our sign out there. You can take a look at your signs out here. God does not make mistakes. And, uh, but this one says Songs of Mistakes and Grace, and it's the Them Cooley Boys, and uh, they're actually from the Cooley region, and I actually heard them at uh, the county fair down at Black River Falls of, uh, before the lockdown a few years ago. And uh, they, they all got together uh, serving at uh, counselors at Luther Park Bible Camp in Chittack, and uh, from there they got together and formed this band called Them Cooley Boys, and they have a variety of different styles of music then. And one of them tells how he went to camp for the first time in seventh grade. It was a requirement for confirmation. He said, I had such a good time that I went back the next summer, and the next summer eventually became a counselor. And the first day working there, I met Soren. He became as thick as thieves, and they formed this band. And oh, by the way, I met my wife that day also, alongside a lot of people that I would call family now. Well, God gives us the ability then and the resources then to be able to praise God in many and various ways. We thank God for our singing here today, for our uh, barbershoppers here as well, and ask that God will give us that ability to keep on singing. We hear in our uh, second reading for today from uh, Hebrews then, it talks about when we gather at that uh, uh, Zion 
to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable festival angels and festival gathering, and then we all gather together. And uh, we hear in our gospel text for today that the uh, woman who was bent over was given the ability to stand up straight, and she with all the rest praised God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, the psalmist enjoys this, and forget not all God's benefits. Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day then, O Day of Rest and Gladness. We profess our Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all languages, we pray with and for Christians in worship all over the world. Together with the psalmist, we bless the Lord, O oh, our souls, and we remember all his benefits. Your spirit speaks in creation. We thank you for watered gardens, for lakes, for streams, for rivers, for abundant yield, for clean water, for sunlight, communities where people and nature live in peace and the rains of this past week. Bring strength, health, and wholeness in the parched places of our lives. Bless those in need this day. Even as we bring before you those for whom prayers are requested, Bob, Marilyn, Anne, John, Tom, Jean, Barb, Dorothy, Michael. Those fighting addictions, people in crisis, our deployed military and their families, our leaders and our children, as well as prayers for Rick Crane. Today we remember with Joe, his memory of his wife, Mabel, give thanks for the flowers given today. 
We also bring before you prayers that are requested for Steve Graff and his family upon his death, as requested by Dave and Julie Swan. For Sue Oslin's brother-in-law, Steve, 89, er, 79 of Portland, Oregon, who passed away, to keep Dee and the family in thoughts and prayers at this challenging time. And for Faith Snyder, who is attending diabetes camp, as requested in prayer by her mother, Susan. Oh God, you give to us the gift of voice and invite us to stand straight and tall and rejoice with all the assembly. We thank you for the ministry of music that you have given to this gathered assembly, for our choir, for our barbershop guests here today. Help us all to go forth from this place with a song in our heart and a lightness in our step. Lord of the Church, we pray for our Congregational Council convening this coming Tuesday. We pray also for our call committee in their presentation. We thank you for the wider church, for our conference, synod, and churchwide. We pray also for our education and youth ministry and this congregation, that the faith and trusted may be passed on to the next generation. We thank you for all the pastor partner, pastor people partnerships of these past decades and ask that you will provide an install pastor who will faithfully lead and serve. We give thanks for gathering us here today about around bread and wine. Bless us in eating and drinking for your service. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Our service continues as the offering is received. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives as Jesus was lifted up from the earth. Draw us near to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to life, and from death to light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us to kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and in this lack of temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the meal, for all is now ready.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O God, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to all the world. Continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sending song, How Firm a Foundation. After that then, again, we are appreciative then of our barbershoppers who will feature us with an Irish blessing.